So hi everyone, we're gonna start with our first talk. Uh, today we are having uh, Didier Roche, Ken Van Dyne, and Marco Trevisan from Canonical, and they're gonna speak about this journey from Ubuntu going from their own shell and going to, towards GNOME shell and closer to upstream community. So the talk is, tall, is called Ubuntu's Journey from Unit to GNOME Shell. So good luck. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Ken Van Dyne from uh, Canonical's uh, desktop team. Uh, we got uh, Didier and Marco as well. Um, we want to talk a little bit about our journey. You know, last year, we made this big announcement. We were moving away from our own shell Unity to GNOME. And uh, kind of ha how did this happen, right? So um, we had this great blog series here by, uh, by Didier uh, all, all, all along the process here, right? We had a, like daily, at some point, updates on what we were doing today, right? Um, but it all started in April. April 2017, we made this announcement that we wanted to deliver this fantastic all GNOME experience, right? Um, and it's all just kind of came to us as a shock. We're like, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna make this transition, right? We, for years, we've been using Unity. We've been shipping Unity. So we started off by you know, coming up with our strategy. We need to do some planning, collect some data, make some decisions on exactly what we're gonna deliver. So in May, we uh, kind of put some feelers out. We knew we needed to collect some data. Uh, we used our friends at OMG Ubuntu um, to put out a poll on particularly extensions, because we knew a lot of people were using extensions in GNOME Shell. We wanted to know what people used, what they cared about. It wasn't so much about what extensions they were using, it was more about why. What features did they want that was important to them? Because we knew we had some things in Unity that GNOME Shell didn't have by default. So we wanted to see what was important, right? So we, we pulled them on a few, a couple of the most popular ones in particular, were like Dash to Dock, um, the uh, app status icons, which we had our app indicators in Unity. Um, we pulled them on a couple other things, and also where we went Windows controls, right? Um, we, had, uh, we had moved our window controls to the left a few years ago, which upset some people, some people liked it. Uh, we really wanted to know what people thought, right? Not just our designers. Um, and really surprisingly, the poll data was split down the middle. Um, some people liked them on the left, some people liked them on the right, it was almost 50%. So you know what, let's just switch back to what Upstream provides. Uh, no point in keeping them to the left. You know, we don't... <laughs> I guess so. Maybe my time's up. Um, so we decided, let's move them back to the right. Uh, yeah, okay, so we continue from there. Yeah. So, so then we were already in July, um, and this is, you know, this month that we did, you know, the biggest, you know, part of the migration, like, you know, from LADM to GDM, from Unity to GNOME Shell. But it was basically, you know, vanilla, uh, vanilla desktop at this point. Uh, we only kept, you know, the icon on the desktop, but apart from that, and our theme, which was ambiance, it was just, as you can see, you know, GNOME Shell. So we moved a lot of our components which were forked before, like Unity Control Center to GNOME Control Center, Unity Settings Daemon, and so on. But uh, also we started to remove some of our patches, like uh, we, know that we knew already that you know, we won't have exported menus uh, on the shell. So we, we removed some of those patches uh, from you know, most of the applications. And so then we were in you know, last year Guadec, uh, so in August 2017, and so we came to Guadec without any predefined plan. We, we didn't know yet if we were going to ship extensions or not. We had some opinions, but we wanted first to discuss. Uh, and so after the core days at the boss, we talked with Matthias, uh, the design team as well, you know, for GNOME Shell, uh, just to discuss, you know, like uh, what we think, you know, are important, what were the results of the pool that we had on OMG Ubuntu, uh, what kind of experience we want as well, you know, to transition our users. Because we need to think as well that our users are using Unity and they are going to a complete, well, not complete, because there is a lot of, you know, overlap in the paradigm, but still, you know, a different experience by default. So how to ease that transition for them? And so after, you know, like this talk, we just, you know, gather all together and say, okay, so what are we going to do? And so we settled on, on you know, shipping two extensions, um, having a dock by default, and also having, you know, like app application indicators. So having some indicators on top for, uh, for some, you know, special cases. So again, our goal was to ease this transition for our users. 
uh, to see what the result would be, you know, from uh, people upgrading from uh, 17, uh, uh, 1704 to 1710, so that we can prepare our next big, you know, update, which was LTS to LTS. And so we were, you know, like we decided as well to drop some features, as I, as I told you, know, the exported, you know, menu bar. Also, you know, all the philosophy to minimize the Chrome that we had, you know, uh, in uh, Unity applications. So, after Guadec, we only had two months and a half, you know, to implement everything before the release, knowing that the feature freeze was by the end of August. So, we start, you know, like, uh, uh, quite in the whip, <laughs> uh, you know, as a, you know, to be as uh, you know as fast as possible, you know, in this transition. So first one, you know, the big change was you know introduction of a doc. We didn't want, and to be honest, we didn't have you know the resources to build our own doc. And we look at you know the available options, and one of the most popular one was dash to doc. Uh, however, we didn't want to you know to ship dash to doc as it was. It's something which is very you know configurable. There is a lot of options. Uh, people can. Uh, really, you know, like uh, shoot on their feet, uh, basically, you know, tweaking some settings and some, you know, common philosophy between GNOME Shell and Unity was to reduce, you know, the number of settings to have a very, you know, like control and focus user experience. Uh, also, we didn't want, you know, as we wanted to change the doc, we didn't want to do it without upstream approval, so we would jam out even, you know, like before announcing it. Uh, we told to them, you know, telling, oh, we think that dash doc would be a good fit, but we want to do this, this, and this. And so what came out of that is what I call the light fork in some way. Um, so we installed Dash to Doc by default, okay, but as it's part of the default experience, we wanted you know, from, uh, it to come from a package in the distribution to be you know, packaged as archive installed by default without the possibility to update it you know, via extensions gnome.org because for a given version of Ubuntu, what sits out, we don't want to add features, you know, to this. We only want to have security fixes, uh, which are queued, you know, with our regular process. So for that, we needed to have a different uh, extension ID than the one from dash to doc. So this is why this is one of the changes. Uh, the other changes is that, uh, so we remove some settings. So there is a settings UI in dash to doc that you can access by right clicking on the doc. And so we didn't want to give access to that, and we implemented only some settings configuration in GNOME Control Center. Uh, and uh, we still wanted as well people to be able to install dash to doc uh, So we didn't want to know to say, this is our experience, you can't add any other extension. Uh, and so we made also some tweaking so that if you install dash to doc Ubuntu doc vanish, basically. Um, yeah, and uh, so what we did, you know, to implement that, uh, we have a separate branch, which is named Ubuntu doc in dash to doc upstream GitHub repository. So basically, I, I, you know, I rebase regularly that branch, you know, on the work they, they did, on, on the work that we push directly upstream as well, like uh, the counter, the progress bar, the build system enhancement. So we push that upstream and then we just rebase with our, I guess, or commits, which are the difference between you know dash to doc and Ubuntu doc, and the different settings. Also, as we always have a share uh, a doc, you know, visible by default, uh, we disable the hot corner for our default sessions. The second extension uh, is the application indicator or case status notifier in the KDE world. So we remove the the sysstray, you know, the classic sysstray a long time ago uh, in Ubuntu. But we had, you know, those special indicators for, you know, dedicated workflow. So those are sync applications, instant messaging, emails. And so we install, you know, this extension as well. It's exactly the same. There is only one commit, which is different from upstream one. It's just the application, uh, the extension ID for exactly the same reason, because we want to control the update of this one. And, uh, and so even, you know, like upstream now uh, give us the, main, uh, the maintenance uh, of uh, this uh, extension. So we are even upstream, you know, for the, uh, for the original extension. So then theming, just a month before the release. <laughs> uh, so we kept Ambiance, you know, as our default uh, application theme. And we wanted to minimize the friction because if you look at ambiance and uh, if I just go back, for instance, 
If you look at you know, the, uh, the, the application you know, decoration, and if you look at GNOME Shell, uh, there is a strong difference in terms of colors, uh, and you have a gradient for one, and the other one is black, it doesn't really match. So we wanted you know, like, to provide something a little bit more integrated, and so we had a, a sprint you know, to, to change you know, the GNOME Shell uh, uh, styles. Uh, so that you know, application integrates better with the shell, um, and as well, we wanted to theme like DM, you know, for the, exactly the same reason. Uh, so that you know, like it's it's you know, like looking a little bit more like Ubuntu. But at the same time, and something which was really dear to my heart, I wanted to provide a vanilla session. So basically, you know, so that Ubuntu users are not locked into our changes, but can try to ex experiment as much as possible the upstream experience as they intended to. It's really easy to get to this vanilla session. It's just a question of installing GNOME session package. And then you have another session in GDM. You choose it, and as you can see, you have the default settings, uh, the default, you know, uh, shell theme, and you don't have any extension, you know, enabled by default. This was possible thanks to a GD patch uh, that was revamped by uh, Alison Norty at the time. And uh, it has been recently merged you know, in a GDB upstream. So now even you know, we can imagine having the same for GNOME Classic, for instance, so that we don't have dedicated keys. But based on the session, you, the G settings default are different. So it's only that, like you have a different you know, default theme uh, per session. And so it's a property which we name, you know, like, we have a property which matches, you know, the shell that you are running. So we have a Ubuntu property that inherits, you know, uh, Unity, our own session, Ubuntu Mate, and so on. Um, and also something, you know, because we have patches, and so to make those patches disabled uh, in the vanilla session, we made a lot of patches conditional to the current shell you are running. So based on XDG current desktop, like GNOME Control Center will have additional panels or not, for instance, or, you know, like we will have an additional tweaks somewhere and a uh, hot corner, you know, will be uh, enabled or not. Uh, so basically, like, all the different, you know, patches that we made are cautiously, you know, trying to, to, to keep the upstream experience as much as possible if you are in the vanilla session. And so, thanks to that, it was, uh, you know, possible to revert to defaults. Even the GDM theming, if people want to revert to the upstream GDM theming, they can do it in one command line. In addition to that, so there are some expenses that we wanted to keep, uh, like uh, the volume override. Uh, the GNOME design team was a great help uh, for this. So basically, this is the fact that you can, you know, push the volume uh, above 100 percent because some hardware have very weak uh, speaker uh, speakers, and so even at 100 percent, you don't really hear them. Um, so this patch is submitted to stream. It's still in the review queue for some parts uh, of the components. Uh, alt tab, uh, we tweak a little bit alt tab. Some, pa some part of the alt tab has been accepted upstream. Uh, some other parts are distro patch. But again, you know, uh, it's conditioned on which session you are running. So in vanilla GNOME session, you will have you know the upstream experience. On our session, we will have the different, slightly different alt tab experience. Uh, the third one is, you know, uh, securing the session mode. So, as I told before, we don't uh, we don't have, we don't want to have the extensions, you know, being able to be updated uh, from extensions on node.org because we want to control the QA of those extensions. And so, we have something in the shell that prevents, you know, in that session to update them from another source. Um, I tried to put a proposal as well uh, to get that upstream. Uh, it's still under review. Uh, and the last one uh, is a search for recent files from the shared shell and Nautilus that it has been merged upstream quite recently, I guess. No? Oh. Ah, it's sweating, okay. <laughs> we said upstream. Close. Yeah. <laughs> Soon. Thanks, Carlos. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and so the last one was, you know, communicating about those changes uh, because, you know, like it was a huge uh, step forward. Uh, for our community. And so explaining some of our decision was really critical to that. Uh, so that's where, you know, I, uh, I went to an insane long, you know, blog post series. Uh, sometimes it was a little bit ironic because writing the blog post took more time than, you know, writing the patch. And to be honest, to be able, you know, to, as a spam planning GNOME as well, as spam it Ubuntu and so on, uh, I took a little bit of advance, you know, <laughs> and then I was faking, you know, getting one new post every day, but it was prepared for two or three days before. Uh, <laughs> 
but yeah, so basically, you know, we had this long series of blog posts to explain, you know, uh, what our decisions were uh, and, uh, and, and why we did this. And so if you want to come back, you can, you know, like look again at Planning Gnome or on my website. Then it's up to Marco. Hello, Gnome. So uh, as part of the upstream work uh, we did on Shell, we started from fixes to better here and there, a bit everywhere in the, on the, on the code where we have looking for issues, we were hitting our users from crashes to improvements. So we started speaking of example of quality, visual quality, we, we fixed some rendering of the text, we're blurring the Wayland session, or improved, for example, the, uh, the way the, the touch world works. Uh, well, I'm still in Wayland. And all the fractional scaling work, which I did with Jonas, and improved, uh, like, experience for that, still, uh, still in the works. I mean, waiting for a button to and to merge for the most parts. And, but we also put some efforts on the performance, some performance improvements, and most of the, this work actually has been done by Daniel Van Brew, which is not here, but still sending patches in these hours. Uh, so the work mostly on the matters. On the matter side, with low level improvements, Started from, for example, some uh, fixes to 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 improve the smooth clock of the, the of the frame, so we need to get a smoother experience of GNOME shell, or for example, to reduce some GPU usage where it wasn't needed, or uh, to cache components which are no need for the re being repainted every time. So trying to improve the 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 way the shell uses its time. Um, Apart from and another part of this this work has been done uh, also joining we joined also the, the performance act fest in Cambridge so we finally started getting thanks to the work of Christian for example we now get some numbers actual numbers and so we and Jonas too so we basically can have information in order to 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 work better on on, on these fixes and improve even more uh, one thing we care about also is to to cross this information with the JS, uh, with JS basically, so mixing the the C code information we get from CSPRO with JS, which is something we still don't have um, much uh, visible in CSPRO. Um, there was some also work within uh, GStreamer to improve the the experience of uh, video accelerated rendering. So mostly for Wayland sessions, so again, Daniel did great work on this side. Um, what else? As in, this is... So in addition to the, you know, performance work that we are going to continue working on, uh, we try a, a very interesting experience, I guess. Um, we wanted, you know, like, our old team basically uh, is very old, in the sense that in design in 2010, and so we wanted to revamp that theme and having something a little bit more, you know, like modern. Um, the idea was to have something entirely driven by the community. So I'm basically the liaison, you know, from that team, and I help them, you know, bootstrapping the project and, you know, putting the infrastructure in place. But they are the one deciding, you know, uh, uh, I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, advising on some of the parts. But basically, you know, like they are the one taking all the decisions, making the work, and so on. And we know what you know design by community means most of the time, but you know on that one it was really awesome. Uh, uh, we have you know a discourse uh, instance uh, which is community.ubuntu.com, and people just synchronize there. They are talking you know like openly. We have some topics that are open for reading, but only you know like uh, uh, only those people on only the people on those teams you know can write there so that they can communicate a little bit more you know fluently without the noise basically. But we have a very good interaction with our community, uh, and uh, and so yeah, they are taking part of you know what was Unity 8. Uh, they, they wanted themselves you know to have some part of those designs you know taking back. Uh, you can see it's way closer to you know our current uh, GNOME shell at least you know theme, and it looks way more modern. So we hope to ship it you know by 
1810 by default. Uh, and, uh, and so, yeah, so something really, you know, like driven entirely by the community. Uh, it has a lot of active users, so we deliver that right now as a snap. And basically, people can, you know, pick the, the channels they want, like they can have, you know, every commit, uh, you know, being pushed on their machine and, you know, see the result. They can even try a uh, pull request, you know, before, you know, it's even merged. And there is a snap generated for each pull request. So people just install the snap and then, you know, they have the new, the new theme available and so they can put feedback and so on. And uh, it's working way better than you know I was afraid of uh, when I launched you know this initiative. But it's something I guess that we can you know think of as a community as well uh, for other part of the design that you know th there is you know there is something which is possible even on design and even with people with strong opinions. Yeah. So uh, I said we we are still working the IDPI and friction scaling work. There are still things we need to fix, mostly for Excel and clients. Uh, so we need to actually define with, <laughs> with, the, with you guys protocols, probably for WM protocols, in order to, to speak to, this, to these clients and get them to, to run their IDPI when we, then we downscale them at, fractional, uh, at our level, at matter level. So I seem to still work on that um, to do. Then there's a great job is doing, Ian Lane is doing for the uh, system D support on sessions, so to be able to control the demons we are running on the shell through the system D users, so like every, everything is running only if you need and in specific and in smarter way. Um, then there's, um, well, love, we were talking with Lavid, how long about some, some features for UX on the shell we're missing from the, again, from the Unity experience will be a most of a, an ability, for example, to filter out your windows from the shell, which is something like typing from the activities or something like that. So we're talking with some, with, with Helen about some initial design vision for that. We still need to finalize. And it would be also nice for us to improve a lot of the, the, the ability of using the shell and for a multi-monitor scenario where so far from switching from the Unity experience where we are way different way of handling this scenario, uh, we have a kind of a, a different approach which not our user like, so we we'll would love to have at least a, the ability to, for example, use better workspaces and treat secondary displays in a different way, especially if you have complex systems like, you know, multi-monitors and maybe projectors connected, then you want to use one like a board, the other is like, uh, for example, workspaces or whatever. So having the ability to be like smart in this scenario, maybe integrating that with some workspace work too, so seeing multi-monitor and multi-workspaces also uh, joint in some way. Uh, we had some design that passed for that, which might be reused by you guys. I mean, it's all free <laughs> information, documentation, and studies which have been done in the past. So if you're interested in looking, then you're free to share, and it will be nice to, to continue and keeping these studies that have been done in the past for with user research and design, actual design UX to, to, to have better experience on that. Um, Another thing we love, so we continuously and want to actually push all our efforts upstream the more we can. And uh, so far, like, that we try to, everything we actually ship in Ubuntu, even like distro patch, most of them which are not like if it's not Ubuntu, but apart from these ones are all the most important being all proposed upstream. Although, yes, I'm, unfortunately, you know, reviewing time of stream and downstream might be different, so we can all the time like, ship the same thing we're actually proposing or refactoring later, but we're trying to update in the, in, in the SRUs. So this thing and is happening. And uh, one thing we like to do also, for especially for most uh, affecting projects on GNOME, is to get some kind of, kind of maintenance of a role for the LTS branches, which so far will be like 3828, because of course we, got, we care much now at this point of these branches, because it's the thing we're, sh we're shipping for five years from now, and so we care about having backports there, chair peaks for huge fixes, and so if we can manage the, for example, release for that, and, and 
so being able to SRU on the distro easily will be nice for on our side, and that I hope you guys, each maintainer here is involved, could help us in getting this uh, possibility. So I guess we can thank you all. Questions? And if you have any questions. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have any running microphone for this section, so if you ask a question, I would like to ask the speakers to repeat so we have it on record for the people watching from home. So the question was, you know, uh, basically wanting some more details on the poll that we uh, that we did with OMG Ubuntu and kind of what that really meant. I think, right? Um, yeah. So like like I was trying to say, we were really trying to poll. We, we chose some extensions that were the most popular extensions on extensions.gnome.org, um, but we only chose one from like certain categories because really what we were looking for is what functionality did the users feel like for uh, Ubuntu users in particular using GNOME did they feel was missing. And uh, like, for example, we chose dash to dock because it was the most popular one out there and it provided a dock. And Unity 7 provided a launcher that was very similar to a, a dock style, right? Um, so we wanted to get feedback to what did people really think about that. And actually the results were overwhelming that they wanted that dock. Um, we had 18,000 um, people took the poll. Um, and I don't remember the numbers offhand, but it was like in the 70 or 80% range thought that that was useful. Um, it was a very high number. Um, uh, the app, app status icons for, the, for our old indicator style in Unity, uh, there was an extension that provided that same API, so it would just work. Applications that use that would just uh, uh, populate there. Um, less people answered that question, but the results were still very high. It was above 60% of the people who answered that question thought that that was very useful. Um, and the hot corner was a question. Um, I think most people, there was less people answered that one. All the questions weren't, weren't required. There were less people answered that one, but it was also still way in the positive. People wanted the ability to disable that hot corner. Um, and that patch has been accepted upstream where it can be disabled now. There's a setting for it. Um, and like I said, in our session, we do disable that by default because the hot corner doesn't make as much sense when you have the dock there all the time. Right? So it, it, it kind of makes sense to disable that. The vanilla session does enable that. Um, uh, and it was a completely anonymous poll. We didn't, you didn't, uh, you had to be logged in, but we didn't see the, uh, we didn't collect the email addresses. So it was uh, done with a Google form, so you couldn't game the system. You couldn't have one person that was taking it over and over again, right? Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, okay. Uh, Yeah, I mean, potentially that always displayed dock. I mean, that was a very popular feature. And I think in particular for Ubuntu users that were used to having that launcher there, uh, it definitely eased the transition for them. Um, so uh, those sorts of things I think are, people are interested in. And it could be you know, future design ideas, so. Any other questions? Um, hey, I think the question was the, our layout for GNOME Shell, are we going to continue with that or are we going to, uh, I think currently the plan is to continue that. Um, I don't see a reason to phase that out necessarily, um, but I'm not saying we're going to commit to staying with it forever. You know. Yes, we do. Uh, uh, Federico's question was, do we have a write-up of the multi-monitor changes? Um, yeah, we have, we collected uh, tons of data on this. Our design team spent probably two years working out all the different scenarios. I mean, they put a lot of work into this. And I'm pretty sure I've already sent that data to Alan, but I yeah. will confirm. Yeah, so I already sent to Alan that. And I mean, it, we can actually publish in the wiki, I think. Oh, I don't know if you already had it, but 
I mean, we have docs for that. It was like a paper was published on the time on the Unity blog. It was something which always stayed there without actually <laughs> being implemented. It was, was like a huge change. Uh, but I mean, it's, it is not to be taken everything by, you know, inspiration is always good, I guess. We, we put a great deal of effort in that in Unity 7, and it would be great to see that work reused. So um, I think we're about out of time. Any more questions, real quick? A quick one? Yes. The system D for user sessions? Yeah, why, why do we want the system D for user sessions? Um, so we've, we've already made the switch to system D for all the uh, um, uh, system services, right? So we can manage you know, what dependencies various services need to have running when they start up. Um, so we made this big transition to system D for system services. Why not use the same uh, concepts for the user session so we can have those nice uh, dependency based uh, you know, startup essentially delaying things to start up it 's just more modern instead of doing wrapper shell scripts for everything you know we can hmm? Uh, no, we're just starting those things up. Instead of the GNOME session daemon execing all these things, we're basically making those all independent uh, system D units. I think, right, Laney? Yeah. All right, so we're out of time. All right, uh, thanks a lot.